My name is Rose Roscoe, and my colleague Heidi Brislin and I are really excited to be back with you for the next uh, session in our series for Express Yourself in Writing. Um, so this is a series of four classes. Um, we're going to here take you through that. As you can see here, it's a series of four classes that we're kind of doing the whole continuum of writing from Emergent Writer, which we did last time with, with Heidi, to building sentences and then building on, on the other writing tools as writers progress in their skills with dictating and composing and typing. And you are here for session two. We are recording all of these sessions. So you can go back and listen to recordings, share them with others, as well as share our handouts. And maybe, yeah, as you can see. Uh, and we kind of went through this in session one, but if you're new to us today, I think we'll each just give a brief overview. Um, Heidi and I um, are enjoying working on this together because we're both OTs. Um, and I've been in this field for about 35 <clears throat> years, and I'm really passionate about universal design for learning and front-loading writing options uh, and thinking of what can be available in a gen ed classroom that any student can use whenever they need it without having to go through a, a lot of hoops and barriers. Um, how can we make writing fun? Uh, like I said, remove those barriers and make sure the writing is front loaded up there. Get creative and have fun. I love using multimedia um, to scaffold writing and give a lot of creative opportunities. And I always like trying new innovative tools. Heidi? And I am Heidi Brislin. And um, I am also an OT, like Rose said, and an AT specialist. I work for SETSI and I work for the Edmonds School District. Um, I've been doing school-based practice for quite a while. Um, and things that make me passionate about writing are creating opportunities so that every child sees themselves as a writer. Kind of my goal is that students who I support through our AT program in Edmonds um, all become readers and writers and communicators. And so getting every child to see themselves as a writer and approach writing. For, I, I tr try to go back and approach writing from a developmental framework, which I think often in the schools, we kind of miss the boat and start right on form. And we totally skip the part about teaching them the function of writing and why we write. And um, looking at just, I'd love to add the right amount of silliness and craziness to writing. So it's just accessible and fun. <laughs> and then publishing students writing is just so much fun when they see their, you know, writing in print um, or in a book on the computer, they're super excited and it just really kind of solidifies them being writers. Awesome, thank you. So these are, again, the learning objectives for the whole series that we want you to be exposed to a variety of tools that you can compare and analyze, tools and strategies. Um, we want you to be able to have a chance to share some of your own experience with writers and what are you, what strategies and tools do you use? And then um, a chance for you to think about what could you implement? Hopefully there's some new things that you learn, or maybe you'll learn how to use tools that you know about in a different way. Um, and how might that benefit your students in their writing? So we always like to start, since this is a series, we're going to do a little bit of review. And I think this was supposed to say session one review. <laughs> I'm just looking at it. Um, so Heidi had shared this developmental stages of writing. And I know it's probably small on your screen. But the idea is you can see um, students starting in that, in that scribbling preliterate state. And Heidi went into quite a much, much of detail on that last week. Um, and that we're going to be progressing to the bottom of this chart where students are going to be um, writing sentences and building sentences, both they could do it, you know, with a tool like writing, or they hopefully you'll try some new technology tools too that might help uh, eliminate some of the barriers that might be there. If, if the act of writing and handwriting is a barrier, what else can we use? Heidi, do you want to say anything else about this form? Um. In review? Well, I just like to share the story that um, this is the developmental stage that um, our typically developing kids um, go through. So my daughter, we had like pages and pages and pages of scribble marks. And eventually we'd start to see some drawings and some letter like things in this whole progression. But so many of our students come to us without ever being able to go through this stage of scribbling to become writers. And so I think it's a really important, when I talk about the developmental sequence, sometimes you've got to step back and let them have that scribbling stage, whether it's with a writing utensil or an alternative pencil for our students who don't have 
access or a keyboard on their AAC device, um, anything like that gives allows them to have access. Awesome. So always keeping this process in mind um, when we're teaching writing and supporting writing with our students. Um, and then Heidi oh. also shared this continuum last time on uh, from Jane Farrell. Um, she's just created this wonderful new writing tools curriculum. We went through it last time, but I'm going to show it again, uh, kind of this time thinking, can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, thinking of how progressing on to like the next stage of sentence building. So I was looking through this and about page nine, sorry, I'm going to make you dizzy for a minute. About right here, you can see how students are are starting to put sentences together, even if it's not a perfect sentence in the perfect order. They've got the idea of doing sentence fragments, um, sentence sentence simples, making <clears throat> sure the order is right in the sequencing, and then going on into um, from simple sentences to having multiple elements and maybe two sentences. So we're going to be right in this area here um, where we're starting to put together one, two, and multiple sentences. And hopefully even, you know, students we thought maybe couldn't even write a sentence. When you start taking away the barriers and giving them tools to express themselves with these scaffold supports, they might become paragraph writers. Mm -hmm. Not that it'll be perfect, but then what they're, all the stuff in their head is going to be able to come out and not like one word when maybe they have a page of content in their head. How can we help release that content in a way that they can be shared with others? So um, again, this is an awesome tool we encourage you to look at because there's not a lot of writing continuums you can look at that really kind of guide, you know, thinking where is your student right now? Where do you want them to go in your work with them? And then what tools and supports might you use and strategies to help them get there? Um, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, nope. I see this being an excellent um, resource for IEP teams kind of from the continuum of, emer you know, pre emergent writing to all the, you know, all the way up to conventional writing. It's designed to be used um, through um, like what the typical development looks like through fourth grade in um, Australia. So I'm not grade four, so I'm not sure what grade that equates to here. And in the prior slide, there were 13 levels of writing that it looked at. And I believe if I'm remembering right, there's like 36 in here, but I might be wrong. It might be even more than that. I was kind of. It's pretty long. Attention. So this is. Let's see. G three H. Yeah. I don't know how they number those exactly. They're kind of. But it's a, a huge amount, you know, of huge, levels. Uh, yeah. So it's like yeah. every level is um, <clears throat> is in there. So you can see where your students are. So it's a yeah, there tool. is 26 pages. So that gives you an idea of how many levels yeah. are in there. So that's really a great tool. And we just, I found out yesterday from another colleague of mine that Jane Farrell just created a, a, her first webinar on this continuum that we just showed you. So um, hot off the press, I pasted this, this webinar just happened like three days ago, four days ago. So if you want to watch this webinar to learn more about this tool, um, I have a link to her webinar here. No, the recording is below. This is her handout from that recording. So you could just go in there and see right there that we have a nice PDF with all um, her ideas. So you might want to glance at that first. And if that's what you want to see, you can go further and go watch the. And the webinar is about two hours webinar. long. I kind of popped <clears throat> on it today for a little while. And um, so you can break it up. It's a 34 point. Four point. Uh -huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so it is designed to assess writing samples from developing writers. Um, it helps you monitor changes. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool to have something like this. I, I did a research study like 13 years ago on writing, and I, you know, finding, I think I used something similar, this developmental writing tool that was made for gen ed, but it wasn't broken down at this emerging writer level near what this is. So I think this is going to be a great tool to mm -hmm. keep in your toolkit in your back pocket. All right. So that's what we wanted to share from last time that, that also uh, impacts what we're going to talk about today. Um, and just one other uh, moment to just say, are there any other uh, important considerations for emerging writers based on what Heidi shared last time. And if you weren't here last time, even if you have thoughts about when you have an emerging writer, 
what are what are some important things that you think about or consider when you're designing instruction for them? So I know we don't have a huge group, but you could either feel free to un unmic or put something in the chat, or um, I'll have Heidi give a little recap of some of her big points because she's got so many wonderful ones. So Heidi, you want to give them a nugget to get things going here? Sure. Then they might have a thought. One of my favorite. Um, and usually I have one sitting here on my desk. Oh, I do. What do you know? Um, one of my favorites is to use the alternative pencil. Oh, let me turn my background off so you can actually, maybe I can turn my background off. If you just put it right in front of your body, we can see it pretty well. It's just when it's. <clears throat> All right, here it is. So um, the alternative pencil is one of my favorite tools to work with students who are at the emergent or pre-emergent um, level. So basically you just go through and they're like, do you want an A? If they say no, you go to B, they say yes, you go right back to B and ask again because that's how that stages of scribbling goes. So you might have a whole page of Bs, that's great. And then you can talk about it as they get faster. You get, at first it's a really slow process, but they're learning that alphabet um, awareness and phonetic awareness, because you can also use the sound, but then you get a lot faster. You can be like, is it on this page? Is it on this page? Is it on this page and so on? And then you, if they say, yes, it's on the page, you can go through each item. So it is a powerful tool and the students are tickled that they're gonna say yes to something and you're gonna write what they said because nobody's ever done that before. I think I think the important tip I see there is giving your students exposure to the alphabet uh, when they're writing because they're still learning that process. Even if they can't write letter A, B, C, or D, um, don't be stuck there mm -hmm. on you know that barrier. This actually is another great tool to overcome that barrier of students who who aren't able to form the letters yet, but they're learning what they mean. So, yeah, great. I don't see any other thoughts in there. So. Um, be, be uh, sure to go back and watch or look at the PowerPoint from last time to, to learn more great ideas for emergent writers. And we'll continue on. So today the focus is gonna be on sentence building. And to that end, um, we're gonna talk about the developmental sequence of writing, sentence writing skills, um, clicker writing grids. Uh, one of my favorite tools, there's so many supports for building sentences there looking at uh, several, uh, three of my favorite writing apps. Um, and then also story writing apps are a great way to work on sentence building. Um, and then we want to hear about any strategies or tools that you're using. So if you don't want to wait till the end, and as you're looking at any of these, you think of a tool that you're using, please throw it in the chat. And then Heidi will be monitoring that and can uh, we want to hear from you too, because we don't want to, I might have missed something. We're trying to kind of give you some big ones, but we know there's a lot more out there. Okay, so um, I just want to introduce the Clicker software if you're not familiar already. Uh, about two years ago, they had an upgrade to Clicker 8. So that is software that works on a PC desktop or a Mac desktop. Uh, it's very full featured, powerful software tool. Um, and they also have a version of it called Clicker Writer that is an app for either an iPad or a Chromebook. So it is available on all three platforms. I would say that Clicker 8 the um, software is the most robust full featured of the three. Um, so just to give you kind of a quick idea, um, you can see here, there's a quick video here, I'm not gonna show you, but what it does is it offers all kinds of ways to scaffold sentence building. So you can have whole words and pictures on the side, pictures within the button box, um, it can be sequenced in order or it can be jumbled up randomly and they have to sequence it. You could have, um, let's see, let me see if I can get to that part that teaches. Oh, that wasn't it. Sorry about that. Clicker eight. I think that's what I wanted. Yeah. I wanted to just show you that. Oh, here's, you can do color coding in there. There's word banks in there. So there's a variety of things and I'll, I'll show you some screenshots coming up, but, um, I don't know any other tool that has all the all the same sentence building features. Usually a lot of our tools assume that students can already write 
somewhat sentences and then it just helps them with vocabulary or word prediction but this one really does a lot more especially in that in the level of sentence building and idea brainstorming so let's go back to the powerpoint and i'll show you a few screenshots here um and why do I believe clicker is so important? Here's some of my favorite reasons. It's multimedia, very engaging activities. When I come across writers that are frustrated because physically they're not writing or they have a blank word processing document, they don't know where to start. Clicker gives them a lot of visuals and engaging things to start with that they can choose and click on to create their own sentences. There's pictures, video, there's speech feedback where you can hear the, the words read aloud. Um, auditory supports, all kinds of great stuff there. And then we're gonna talk today mostly about these writing grids to support sentence building, uh, which are scaffolded. And then accessible book reading and book making. So on the writing end, the book making, you can actually write your own books. And most of those are maybe a single sentence or two, although they could be longer. And then Clicker has a wonderful data analytics tool that's just new in the last two years. So whatever writing you're doing with that student, it can analyze not only how much they're writing, but it can analyze the spelling, it can analyze how much they used uh, a writing grid and when they used it, all the aspects. When did they use word prediction? Um, it's a great analysis tool. So Clicker is a great thing for keeping track of IEP goal data. So we're going to take a quick look at Clicker grids for sentence building first, or actually that's that whole area I mentioned. And specifically here, we'll look at clicker uh, sentence sets. So as you can see here on the right, um, and I started showing this to you earlier in another screen, you can see a picture of an action, a girl sitting there writing. And so then you've got your five words that you can sequence by clicking. Um, what's nice about, nice about this is you can um, have a sentence model appear above that sentence. Uh, you can have a little here button where you click it and you can just hear the sentence read aloud and then try to create it after you listen to it. There's lots of levels. You can have it be errorless where it will only let you select the first word in the sequence, then the second word, then the third word. So they, they're they clicking it, they're learning the motor pattern, they're seeing the sequence, but they don't have to remember it yet. They have success the first time. Once they get that down, of course, you can remove that uh, guided access and then they have to click on their own and figure it out um yeah and you can see here there's punctuation in there they're learning the punctuation the left right directionality um pretty just simple way to make them and they're really easy to make too i go here um for each of these if you want to go into it later this is more for a reference but there is a video on how to create a sentence set all these videos are five minutes or less just to get you going um, but literally what's nice about it, I just go back here. There's when you go into the edit mode, you just type, let's say you want to have six sentences in your set. You'll just type out your six sentences or you have them in a word doc and paste them into the creator and it will create this um, format for you. So it's really easy to customize these and make the sentence sets what you are teaching really easily. And you can see all that support in there. Okay, and again, here's uh, some resources on creating and editing. Um, we are going to give you some time later, hopefully, to look at some of this, or at least to tell me what you want to see more of. And if we're a small group, I'm happy to demonstrate any of these. <clears throat> so let's talk about connect sets. So this builds on the sentence set in that now, as you see here, I can add pictures in with the words. I can have, instead of just whole the five whole words I can say well for the noun you get to choose one of these six um, subjects lizard robin bee frog so I choose one of those oh then I can choose the verb then I can choose you know that from the six green for the so it, it talks about parts of speech and gives you choices so now with that one grid uh, your student can probably write five sentences right five or six one about each animal, and they don't have to go any further than that. And they're learning sequencing, left to right. Um, they're learning to categorize their words and seeing those parts of speech. So, um, and this one can be customized also. Um, but what's ni nice about Clicker, if you're new to it, there's tons of pre-made uh, writing activities already saved in this Learning Grid Center. 
So chances are you can find a lot of great stuff to start with easily. And if you find a sentence grid like this that you like, all you have to do is go into edit mode and I could easily change uh, the word in each of those boxes and the picture to maybe fit better with my lesson. Um, the other nice thing is, you know, if they're not sure what these are, when they're trying to visually read it, they can right click on any word and hear it read back. So they can preview the words, listen to them and decide, oh, I wanted cat. That one says cat. Then they left click and it will um, go up into the writing window. So again, you can see these two that connects the sentence sets and this connect sets are really um, have multiple levels of scaffolding that you can give support to students um, for writing. And I do have clicker pulled up. So if there's time after I kind of whip through some of these slides, I'm happy to go into the, the program and demo any of this if you want to see it live. I just want to give you the idea what it is first. <clears throat> any questions in the chat window yet? Okay, not yet. No questions, sorry. Okay, and here is um, a slide that, again, has a quick video on how to create and edit a connect set. So if you're like, oh, that's the perfect level that my students need, you want to just watch that five-minute video to give you a quick idea of how to do that, um, that's right in there for you. So again, what I'll probably do is when we get through this, if there's time uh, for this group, I'll, I have Clicker, the full program pulled up, and we can go in and do some live demo. Um, the third tool uh, in the clicker group sentence grids I wanted to show you is word banks. So um, this is going a little bit beyond sentence building. They have to have some basic writing skills again, um, because now they just have these words to work with, but they're going to know, how, you know, they're going to have to know how to start their sentence and then go back and just choose keywords. So this is the next level in the sequence after they've developmentally gotten consistent at, at doing sentence building with the sentence sets and sentence grids, then maybe they can try writing with just word banks and see if they can get some content and composing going on their own. Um, so what's cool about the word banks is here you can see in this screenshot, you can see four categories eggs, hatching, chicks, adults. So you can you can have like spring, fall, summer, winter, and you can have themed words according to a topic. Uh, so there's actually four word banks right here. You just click on one, click on the other, and all those are available to you, your student, when they're writing about this topic or these four topics. Um, so that's one way. You can also just have a one-page simple writing uh, word bank and maybe you just want them to use certain vocabulary for that writing assignment, you can just maybe have those eight or 12 words right there. Um, you can also do an alphabetized one where they have a whole A through Z tabs. And for each tab, there are words that start with that letter. So if they're writing about, you know, presidential elections. There's actually a, a alphabetized word bank in the learning grids on that topic. So it's pretty cool. Um, how much is already there and how easy it is to create those. So again, if you know words, if you have the words in a Word doc or listed somewhere, all you have to do is copy and paste that set of words and then follow the directions to put them in at the, you know, at the set time. And then it creates these word banks really easily. So easy to create as long as you already have the content or you can just make it up as you go. Sometimes I start a word bank and then I just come up with, you know, eight or 10 words on my own, and I can create it on the fly, even with the student sitting next to me, I could do that. Okay, so, and again, for your resource later, if you want to see quickly, okay, I, the word bank looks great. How do I make one really quickly? There's a little video for you to reference later. All right, so um, I'm going to move into sentence building apps, and then, um, I just have one other section after that. So we probably move through these pretty quickly. And then I'd love to take input from you guys on what you want to see more of, or if you have ideas that you want to share too, please feel free to step in. Um, this, this app is for iOS, the Sentence Builder, and it's by Mobile Education Store. This app has been around for quite a while, actually. Um, but it's a tried and true one that I really like. And you can see that it's almost kind of like a slot machine where each of those 
slots right here kind of rotates. So for them, for the, you can just take your finger and slide to the right one that you want and then try to make the sentence make sense. So it's really great for learning how to work on grammar and make sure that things make sense. Um, you can use different pictures to kind of do the sentence around. Um, and then, of course, if you get it right, there's lots of great reinforcement. So it's kind of an interactive, hands-on, fine motor way of working on sentence building and grammar. Um, has anyone used that one before? You can just throw it in the chat if you did. Uh, it's it's pretty fun, and it's kind of one of those where if it doesn't sound right, they listen to it, and then they can go, oh, try again. Let's go back and listen to that again. Most of these apps, like you can see stats here, they take data, too, on how your student is doing, so you'll have some nice data to show. All right. Um, yeah. And then Rainbow Sentences is kind of a different version of that. So, again, different ways. I think it's nice to give students a variety of way, ways to work on sentence building. One of them might be actually having word cards and sorting word cards on and putting sequencing on their desk. But then maybe they'll go to a, an iPad station and work on an app for a while. And then maybe they're doing a group lesson with Clicker and learning some sentence building. So thinking of some ways you can use multiple low tech and high tech modalities um, and just mix it up for the students so they don't feel like they're stuck with a paper and pencil. And that's as far as, you know, they can't get very far because that part of the writing uh, doesn't work for them. So I think when the iPad came out in 2011, I was pretty excited because it just felt like a whole new engaging platform where kids could touch and interact and have graphics and so many things to interact with that made it fun. Um, Heidi, did you have a comment? I just had a question. So on the yeah. second picture on the page. Yeah. Um, does it do they read it back so it has like record play save next sentence what are those things actually what, yeah good question tell us about those i think this is one where the student can record their own voice so once they've written a sentence and got it down there like they can hit record and then the student will read it the girl is reading on the grass then they can play it and hear their own voice read back so it's a way to work on um communication skills. A lot of speech therapists might enjoy using this. So you're working on, it's kind of like with speech and OT. OTs work on handwriting and the, the process of writing and sentence building and, you know, all the parts that go with it. And speech therapists work on sentence building, but then they might want to reinforce it with some of the verbal part of reading that and hearing it read back. And then, you know, what's great about whether they read it themselves or they have a screen reader read it back, um, that is going to be a great editing tool later in their life mm -hmm. where they're going to go back and they've written three or four sentences. And when they listen to it, they're like, oh, something didn't sound right there. Maybe I need to go back and make a correction. So it's a great uh, practice anyway to be able to read back what you've written just so that you know that it sounds right and also it reinforces it. It's another way of reinforcing that, that sequence uh, in their own head. Thanks, Rose. Mm -hmm. Um, the third one is called Sentence Maker. Uh, and this one's fun because, again, you can drag and drop these words. So, like, you have the word the here, what you see the cow on the upper left there. You can literally put your finger on the and drag it into the right one. So, you know, it's a little bit of matching. I'm going to drag the into the the cow. And if they try to drag the one, wrong one in the wrong slot, it'll bounce back out. <clears throat> so it's it's a really kind of an early sentence building app, <clears throat> but also has the fine motor aspect in there. So you can start really easy and it's pretty airless and pretty fun for them. Uh, and then you can add on and make it more complicated, you know, longer sentences. <clears throat> you can um, customize and add your own items. Um, and this is kind of a cool idea that you can actually record create and record sentences in your own language so you could create this to be um, multilingual as well and write into the app so again just I guess this one mainly is working on word order and and building sentences that way which all of these are and then eventually they would get into typing letter by letter but 
just kind of thinking about all the ways you can help students who maybe aren't writing letter by letter yet, they can still work on building sentences, right? And all these great reinforcing ways that are really easy. Um, and then they learn sentence order and sequencing, maybe even before they learn how to spell the word, you know, cow, who knows? But um, the point is to not let that the handwriting piece, letter by letter handwriting, be a barrier to them learning how to make a sentence because there's so many different ways to do that. But to reinforce Heidi's piece on the, uh, the, the, the alternative pencil, don't skip the letter by letter piece, work on the alphabet, work on that piece, but also let them go further um, with the sentence building at the same time. It's almost kind of like you can work on these parallel. I don't know, Heidi, what you think about that, if you have any comments, but. I think it's great to give them as many opportunities, to, you know, for reading and writing literacy activities as possible. So you can mix it up. Yeah, good. Okay, so the last section I wanted to just share a few fun tools is called story building apps. And of course, back to Clicker, because Clicker has uh, in its Clicker 8 suite has Clicker books. And it's, I find book making and reading these electronic books is one of the most engaging parts of Clicker. And when I, I did a research study years ago using this tool, we always started by reading a book, whether it was a, you know, a low tech book or electronic book, gaining that information on a topic, reading the book, and then turning around and writing that once they have that content and they've, they've reviewed those words and been exposed to that vocabulary, now they're ready. They have some ideas in their head. They're making connections. They're ready to start doing their own writing. So I love how you can read a book, um, have it read to you. You can read it orally, or then you can go to that next step of read of writing a book. And notice that when they're this this lower uh, screenshot, they can have word banks available. They can have word prediction available. They can add pictures. So it truly is multimedia and supported writing right within the bookmaking app, as well as, you know, if they're just writing sentences in that word processing document. Um, the other cool thing about Clicker Books is um, when I've gone into a gen ed classroom to teach a lesson on bookmaking, electronic bookmaking, probably six kids in that class really benefited or needed some of those tools in there. But you couldn't tell who they were because all the kids were engaged they all, in 45 minutes, having never used the tool before, they all learned how to make a book. They went and grabbed images from the Click, Click Library or from the, the web, because some of them, of course, they know how to go out there and grab those. Uh, and they were all thrilled and everyone could succeed at that. So it's kind of a great UDL tool to use in the classroom so that everyone gets a chance to engage. And the kids who really need that support, even ELL kids love this because there's all that speech feedback uh, there's all the visuals that go along. They can listen to words read aloud before choosing them. Um, all those supports are built in for, for everybody. So I love I love uh, clicker books. Um, and then here's how it looks. If you were going to create a new book, you can just see these four tools on the left. Um, and one of them is to create the text box. One of them is a, a picture. One of them is the text box that you write, title box picture, text box, and then a sound clip where, again, you can record the student or their teacher or their parent actually reading that page. And then when they click on the speaker button, they hear a real voice, an audio voice, not just a synthesized voice. So lots of fun things. Just those basic four components are what um, how you make a book. And again, this is just another screenshot of if you're making a book on your own, you can see that uh, you could give them a picture or help them choose their picture to anchor their book and then do some simple writing about it uh, using um, some of these word word banks if they need it, um, and then word prediction. So again, if they're having some success with the sentence grid apps that I showed you earlier, the sentence grid sentence sets and connect sets, they might be ready then to go on to do some book writing as the next level because they have enough ideas now where they can hopefully piece together at least a sentence or two with these extra help with extra help with scaffolding so you can see 
you know, you have to really figure out where students at. But the nice part is when you put together this list of activities, I've even had on the same topic, a connect set, a sentence set, and a, a, a word bank. And the students can choose which level of support they need, possibly, or the teachers can assign it. And everyone can write on the same topic, just with different levels of support. Heidi, do you have a comment? I was, we just had a question in the chat, and it was, yeah. do, any, do you know if any of these apps are available for Chromebooks? That's the main technology that um, many of Michelle's students have. And okay. um, I responded, I know Clicker has one, and I just did a quick Google search, and there are several... Um, sentence building apps available for Chromebook. And I would recommend definitely checking out with your K-1-2 teachers and see if they have ones that they like or um, if they're ones that are part of the curriculum that they're using um, and check that out. How about, okay, so I will admit my weakness is Chromebook because I don't even own one and I have not used one in either of my school districts, but I should have thought of that and, and did some more searching. Obviously the clicker, uh, there is a Chrome version of Clicker, but the other apps I showed you were iOS. Um, and traditionally, iOS has had the most variety and the most robust apps, but Android does have some uh, sentence, some writing apps, and um, and it sounds like the Chromebook does as well. So we'll have to, if anyone has names of apps or finds them when they're searching, please share those with us. And I'm almost to the point where I want to hear from you. So feel free to throw those in the chat or and Mike, if you want to talk about that. So maybe you're asking me, but if you have any ideas, I'd love to hear them. And I'll look through where we've got a whole, like what Chromebook apps are able okay. to be used in our district. And I can just yeah. kind of peruse, peruse through those before our next session. Okay. Um, I think we were, you know, if there was more people, and I know at least one of you is commuting, we would probably do some more sit down, chat, share, small group. But I'm going to just share two more tools that we've heard about. I, Heidi did mention this a lot, this one last time, Book Creator. We both love this tool. The night, and So think of the same concepts I just told you about clicker books, but Book Creator is online and it is also available as an app. And does it say, yeah, so... So if you were on a Chromebook, you would go to the website version. So this would be available on Chromebooks. Um, it's affordable. I mean, the app is low cost or free, but I think with the online version, you can get a free account with up to what, 40 books? Oh, you're muted, Heidi. I think with your free account, you get a total of five books. But say oh, you had like your, you know, Say your students were writing books on acorns or, you know, fall, and you could combine all of their books into like one book. And so and you'd have like, that could be one book. And so you can combine your okay. books so that you can still have a book available to work in. So you have some limited capacity in the free version. If you're going to use it consistently as a class. Uh, with a whole classroom, you might need to talk to your district about a subscription. But, you know, if you're a support specialist, um, you know, SLP, OT, or somebody that just uses it occasionally with one student, go ahead and try it with the free version of the app because you can go pretty far with that before you need to go get a full subscription. Um, but so here's, I guess I made this big enough, it's a little fuzzy, but this is just a quick snapshot of the toolbar um, on the upper right here. You just Click on the plus and then you have access to photos, camera, a pen where you can do digital inking. You can pop in a text box and type some text um, and you can add sound. So it has a lot of great features built in pretty easily. The other cool thing um, is it's really easy to export. Once you've created, you can create, export a PDF or a video. You can publish it and then it's really easy to send home to the parents and share. Uh, which parents always love to see their kids work. Um, you can also see there at the bottom, there's all kinds of fun tools with different colors for drawing and enhancing. I drew my little very rudimentary crab on there. So you can draw anything. They could write their name across the picture. You can see the sunset. So lots to do with Book Creator there. And I have a few more slides on this one. This is a Book Creator activity book with 50 or more activities on how you could use Book Creator. What I like about this is um, 
This has a lot of starter phrases too. So you might even start with um, giving your students a starter phrase. They even put activities in here. Uh, let me see. The best pet is. So, you know, you can give them a sentence starter and have them build on that. Or again, they can make their own. Uh, read a book and review it. So maybe it's a book review they're writing about. So there's lots more ideas in here you can look at to see. Um, write, write about something you really love. Oh, use one of the magic ink pens to design something fantastic. Or draw a picture about, you know, what you did over the weekend. So it could kind of be like a journal activity as well. So uh, yeah, so that's available. And you can see here that once you've published a book, you just click on this read to me and then the book can read aloud um, back to the students as well. So that's for you to check out. Um, here's a couple more slides. The, another fun thing to do with book creators, make kind of a cartoon. So this is, I, I gave one of my interns, like I had five things in my office. I said, make a quick book creator book out of this. So we just randomly took this guy and, you know, put in a little speech bubbles and wrote things and just had fun with it. So students can make some a comic about just anything, whether it's a few things they have laying around or an imaginary um, person they, they want to make up. There's lots to do there. And you can see here, if you if you uh, teachers and and support specialists work together, you know anything from poetry books to interactive stories to research journals, and you know thinking about um, you know emerging sentence builders, you know about me books. Just having one sentence per page is all it takes to make a great book. So when they're at that stage, they can still have a great product to share, and maybe they do one sentence per session or per day, and they they build the book that way. So Book Creator is a great tool to do that. It's also a great tool to publish if you're doing like a structured writing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's a great way to kind of publish <laughs> their structured writing as well. Okay, great. And this is the last tool. Um, Pictello is an app. I, I believe it's only an iOS app, so it's not a Chromebook, but What's important about this one is it's switch accessible. So this is one that your students that are like using one or two head switches or one or two hand switches, um, they can read a book. Um, they can help give input to the book. And I had one student who was um, high school and transition who wanted to do a job where she was reading books to preschoolers because we had an early, early childhood program on campus at the high school I was at. And she went into their room and had a projector up on the screen and connected to her iPad. And she used her switches to turn the pages and read stories. And then the teacher had some, uh, you know, like a, a, a big stuffed spider and we did itsy bitsy spider or whatever it was. So a way for them to participate and access that book is, is really good. And there's so many more ways using visual schedules, visual stories, um, again, making up their own stories talking about a vacation or camping trip or whatever. There's lots to do with this one. So this is about, I think it's still around $15 for this app, but again, super switch accessible, which is its best. The reason why you want to choose this over the other ones, if, if you had students that really needed that. Um, so this is kind of cool. This is a, a Pictello story and- Ashley. The better? Is yeah. at the, the very first time we used Pictello with our group of students, I was really surprised to see how intuitive it was. Um, it's so easy to use. Um, we've even found that if we have visiting staff members, it's the boys themselves that will teach the visiting staff members how to use it. The boys found it just a great means of expressing their storytelling skills. We've been thrilled with the quality of work that they've given, but they have also excited that they're going to be able to share these in PDF form with their parents or to others um, via iCloud that also have Pictello. So it's opened a whole wide world for those boys. Yes. We were all dressed up. Beautiful. Yeah. That it is 
smiling at the table as he's dancing. I guess what I really love about Pichella is it's opened a whole new world to some of our students. And we found a lot of creativity coming out of them that we actually didn't realise that was there. There's um, all types of different phrases coming out that just shows the individuality of our students. This is the foyer near room one. This is where a student arrive at Black Mountain School in the morning. Okay, so you have an idea. It's just kind of fun to see how our students are using these. And sometimes when we give them this kind of support, they surprise us with, with what they can produce. Like we assume they didn't have anything to say and all of a sudden they have all these things to say and they're taking pictures of each other and their teachers and their families and then writing about those. So um, I think the story building apps are powerful in that way um, because it really gives our students a venue, a, a way, a platform to make a story that's relatable, like books that they read, right? I'm going to make my own book, so. Um, and this is, for your reference, there's a whole manual and just a little screenshot on, on how you get oriented. These are four sample books, but then it talks to you about how you make your own with the plus. So I won't go into all that. That's, again, just for your reference. If you decide you want to dig more into Pictello, um, this is available for you in the in the slideshow. Um, and then here's where you can see this great accessibility menu where you can configure one or two switches. Right here, you can see how you do that. And then this switch button shows right up on the home screen where you just select switch and then it will become switch accessible after you set it up. So, um, and there's lots of other features here. You can see speak as you type, pronunciation, speech rate. Um, yeah, so lots of great, good accessibility features. 